Welcome once again to the second session on event study methodology. I am Professor Anjali Gupta from the Department of Commerce, Atmaram Sanatan Dham College, University of Delhi. I, along with my colleague, Ms. Monica Saini, is here to discuss about the event study methodology. Till now, we have had a insight into the different aspects of the event study relating to the relating to the different, what do we really mean by, what are the seminal papers being discussed by the events for the purpose of event study, how the different aspects that are being calculated, how, what are the different types of event study that have happened, what do we do about the event day, event date. Also, we have discussed in the last slide or the last presentation about the aspects to be considered in the event window. And definitely, we have also discussed about the estimation window. We were discussing about the timeline that we have to take into account when we are dealing with the event study. We have to take it that event day as the time that is T0, which is regarded as the event day. Also, the time period immediately before the event day till a particular time would be regarded as be considered in the event window. The time period after the event window that is on the negative side that is before the event will be regarded as the estimation period. Any time period that we are studying in the event window after the event that is T3 would be regarded as the post event window. In most of the event study, there is definitely a gap between the estimation window and the event day. The gap that is between the estimation window and the event day is what is regarded as the event window period. We have already discussed about the event window period, which can be between minus 10 to plus 10 days, minus 20 to plus 20 days, minus 30 to plus 30 days, minus 2 to plus 2 days, minus 5 to plus 5 days, and so on. Now, the event study can be undertaken on a longer horizon as well as on a shorter horizon. In most of the cases, what we try to do is that we try to study the event effect of the event on a shorter horizon. But definitely the people, the researchers have also studied on a longer horizon. Shorter horizon can be or the studies may be for a period anyway between two days to one month, that is 30 days. Whereas for a longer horizon, the period can be anywhere between the uh, can be anywhere between the time period before that is up to five years. Also, also what it is there that when we are studying about the longer horizon, what we are doing is that we are trying to find out that what is going to be the, uh, the inefficiency or the different expected returns is what we are studying. But when we are studying about the shorter horizon, what we are trying to study is we are trying to study the efficiency with which that or how fast the information or the event is getting incorporated into the prices. Now, whenever we are undertaking any particular event study, we have already discussed that first we have to specify the event. That is the reason or the factor that we are going to analyze or study is what is the most important thing. Then we try to create a sample which we are going to study in order to ensure that we are able to know the impact of that particular relevant event. Last and not the least, we try to define the event window, the estimation window, and definitely the measurement window that it is there. Then we try to estimate the normal returns, and definitely we try to find out whether there is a presence of 
as uh, there is a presence of abnormal return or not. After finding out the presence, we carry out certain statistical tests in order to determine that if there are abnormal returns present or not. Now, whenever we are doing that, definitely is uh, uh, whenever we are doing that, the first thing that we need to define out here is that the normal return, that is, or the expected return is that what we try to find out. That is that if there is every impact of a particular event is happening on, on that day, what we try to do is that we try to find that the extent to which it is happening. That is what we need to do. So now what we are trying to do is that first thing that we have to do out here is that we need to define the normal returns. That is, or as we say, is that we try to find out the, uh, the expected returns. After finding out the normal returns, we need to really compare them with the actual returns in order to find out the abnormal returns, which is the crux of this event study. As was being mentioned by McKinley in 1997 and Brown in 1985, abnormal return is going to be calculated, which is the difference between the actual returns and the estimated returns. Now, there are different methods in order to calculate the abnormal returns. The practical or how it is being calculated on an Excel sheet will be mentioned or will be discussed by, the, uh, by my colleague, the, uh, Monica Saini, in the next presentation. But out here, the first method that we can carry out in order to calculate the abnormal return is we try to find out the difference in the actual return in the event window and we take the expected return or the normal return as the mean of the actual returns in the estimation window. The difference between the two would be regarded as the abnormal return when we are using the mean return model. Another sophisticated approach is calculation of the abnormal return using the market return. In the market return or the risk adjusted model, what we try to do is that we try to find out the abnormal return by taking the, alpha, the parameters relating to the return from the, uh, we try to regress the abnormal return by taking the parameters from the estimation window that is the alpha intercept and the uh, intercept and the beta and then we use that in order to find out the the normal return in the event window so the most common approach that is the market adjusted risk adjusted model or the market return is going to uh, do carry out a regression of the returns on the stock in the event window in order to find out the normal return or the expected return. Plus, as is being shown in the equation, the expected return for a particular firm I on any day T during the event window must be calculated using the beta estimate and the intercept from the, from the, from, uh, from the, from the parameters that are being used, calculated using the, using the returns in the event estimation window. Now, another method in order to calculate abnormal return is control portfolio return and multiple index market model is another way of calculation of the event, which uh, we are not discussing right now. Right now, the focus of our presentation is going to be on the popular method employed in order to study the event, in order to use the event study using or calculation of the abnormal return in the risk adjusted market model. Now, whenever we are carrying out the risk adjusted market model, what we try to do is that we try to estimate the normal returns and they are the estimates which are being calculated using the estimation period. 
Now, uh, whenever we are doing that, the first simple method that we use is that we try to calculate the actual returns using this equation. Then we calculate the, uh, the actual returns for the market using this uh, for the market or whatever is the basic indice we are using using this formula. And definitely we regress it in order to find out the normal returns and definitely the difference between the two, the expected and the normal normal returns that or the expected returns and the actual returns is what is being regarded as the abnormal returns. Now, further discussion that how we are going to carry out the, how we are going to carry out the average abnormal return, the cumulative average uh, abnormal return. These terms are going to be discussed in the detail in the next slide, uh, in the next video. Definitely some issues at last that I would like to point out here when we are carrying out the event study is that definitely the basic objective of conducting an event study should be such that the expected, uh, the event window, the estimation window, whatever is the window that we are using for the purpose of study must have the returns which should be pure from every other event. That is every other event should not have, should not, there should be the returns which should be not having effect of any other event. Because uh, in that case, it would be regarded as that we are dealing with returns which are having or which are being affected by a noisy return. Also, the returns that we are studying must be in uh, must be returns which must be reflecting synchronous trading. That is, the discontinuous trading should not be carried out for the purpose of the returns that we are studying. Also, they should be there should not be any relationship that should be uh, should be there in the sample companies or in the abnormal returns of different companies that we are studying it is always assumed that the series of the returns the abnormal the expected returns the normal returns that or the actual returns that we are using for the purpose of study should be normally distributed last and not the least what is there that the, the series or the returns that we are studying should not be should be free from any contagion effects so in brief, for the purpose of event study, what we need is that the series of the returns or the sample companies whose returns we are using must be such that they must be pure and must be focusing only and relating to only the event that we are studying. Thank you so much. With this, we come to the end of this video. In the next video, in detail, we will be discussing about how, what are the different terms that are being used for the purpose of, uh, that are being used for the purpose of the event study. That is, we will be studying the other important terms like the average abnormal return, the cumulative average abnormal return, and the other terms, how they are being calculated using different software. Thank you.